So uh, to start today, we're looking at um, how to find the domain of various functions that are kind of combined together into a lot of different pieces. So just to kind of recap, to recap, let's ask this. If I say f of x equals square root of something, square root of some function, the domain of that, what, what's the restriction on square roots? So there's imaginary stuff that occurs, right? So what causes the imaginary stuff to occur? If the number inside the radical is negative, we have a problem, right? So if this part here is negative, we have a problem here. Does that make sense? So when we deal with square roots, the first thing we got to do is take whatever this piece is and set it greater than or equal to zero. Do we agree? That's the one major thing that at this point in your life, you should know that. Now, maybe you've forgotten it. Maybe it's, you know, kind of like Friends on television. You never saw it, so it's not even a rerun. It's just new to you. But the inside part's got to be greater than or equal to zero. And then additionally, if we have some function that involves a fraction, what do we know there? This piece here cannot be zero. Do we agree? So what we're doing here is we're going to take for that first problem these two ideas and combine them into one glorious answer. N not that answer. This answer. So what are we going to observe? The first thing we're going to observe is what? That 2x plus 5, because it's under a radical, has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay? Yes? You said 2x plus 5 because it's under a what? Under a radical. My bad. I, I talk real fast and sometimes not very clear. Um, now, I heard somebody over there say, well, you just ignore the top. No. No. You don't just ignore the top. Um, in this case, you ignore the top. So you're actually kind of right. But if the top piece has a fraction or a radical in it, then you got to deal with that as well, which brought the early finisher problem on. So in this case, you would basically not worry about the top because x plus 2 isn't going to have any restrictions on it. But that top piece could be any number of things that might invoke a restriction. Okay. Now, as you solve this, this is just straight solving. 2x greater than or equal to uh, negative 5. x is greater than or equal to negative 5 halves. Right? So, ordinarily, you would say, well, the domain is negative 5 halves to infinity. The bracket. But what do we know? It cannot be zero, yes? So functionally, we're not going to say that this is greater than or equal to zero. We're going to say that this is what? Greater than zero because it cannot be equal to zero because it's in the bottom. Does that make sense? And so your answer for this problem becomes... negative 5 halves to infinity. Yes, sir. Yeah. It, the good point. I, I, I like what you just said. Uh, the observa observation was, how can it be negative 5 halves to infinity if this cannot be 0? And the answer is, if you plug in x is 0, like if we find... If we find f of 0, we get 0 plus 2 over the square root of 2 times 0 plus 5. I can actually plug 0 in. I just cannot let this expression be 0. That expression is 0 whenever x is negative 5 halves. Okay? So it's not the 0, it's the expression being 0 that's the problem. But great observation. We'll put you in the lead for the best question, best answer today. Because if we use negative 5 halves, if we find f of negative 5 halves, 
Um, just so that we're straight, that's negative 2.5 if, if you want to deal with decimals. When you plug in negative 2.5, it's negative 2.5. It's negative 2.5 plus 2 over 2 times negative 2.5 plus 5. And it's the square root of that. This is negative 0.5 divided by this whole bottom piece is going to be the square root of 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Negative 0.5 divided by 0 is undefined. Okay. So that's why you cannot use negative 0.5. And it's going to be different on the last problem that we do because on the last problem we do, the square root's not on the bottom, it's on the top. And that changes things. Okay? Any questions on that? All right. Now, how do you do this one? How do you do this one? All right. Um... You were on the right track with the way you split that up. But what do we know here? The top is not a um, the top is not a um, square root or anything like that. So there's no restrictions for the top. The bottom is the concern. So what you got to do is you're ultimately going to set this piece equal to zero. Yes. So you're going to get two x squared minus five x minus three is equal to zero, maybe you'll use quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. I assume everybody knows that. If not, you'll never be able to leave a math party because that's the sobriety test for all math parties. Okay, go to a math party. If you can't say the quadratic formula, you can't drive home. I factor, this will be 2x plus 1 x minus 3 is equal to 0. Just a reminder, this is negative 6x. This is positive 1x because that always confuses people. Like, how do you get negative 5 if you ain't got but 1 is negative 3? It's the inside and the outside pieces combined together. Setting this equal to 0, you would get 2x plus 1 is equal to 0. x minus 3 is equal to 0 which would give you x equals 3 and x equals negative 1 half. Do we agree? Now, as we do that, as we do that, how do I write the domain? Do we agree that we can use any number we want to other than negative 1 half and 3? All other numbers are fair game. So I want you to think about this. If this is the number line, and this is negative infinity to infinity, and the only two numbers I'm saying you cannot use are negative one-half and three, I want you to look at the way this sets up. I'm going to cross these off. So what numbers am I saying we can use? The answer would be negative infinity to negative one half union negative one half to three union three to infinity. You'd have it broken up into two pieces. Okay. Now So this was the early finisher, which is a result of whoever said, don't worry about the top. So in this case, you better worry about the damn top because if you use zero, even though the bottom is not zero, the top is a problem. Does that make sense? So now you kind of have to worry about the top. So how does this work? 
Well, it starts off by saying, just set x minus 5 greater than or equal to 0. Now, understand this. This says that what? x has got to be greater than or equal to 5 no matter what. Right? So, on that negative infinity to infinity number line, if this is negative infinity and this is infinity, you're starting at uh, positive 5 and you're going this way. Does that make sense? Now, if we're starting at positive 5 and going this way, what else do we have to be worried about? We'd have to worry about what happens if x minus 7 is equal to 0. In that case, x would be equal to 7, and now I have to worry about getting rid of that number. Does that make sense? Now understand how this would write, if I were writing the domain, it would look like this. 5, bracket, 7, parenthesis, 7 to infinity. Any number bigger than 5, but don't use 7 because 7 makes the bottom 0, now you've got a problem. Does that make sense? But observe something. Observe something. If this is a plus 5, if this is a plus 5, then you're... You're setting this greater than or equal to 0. You're saying x is greater than or equal to 5, and then they're going like this. Well, don't let x be negative 7. Well, hell, it ain't going to be negative 7 anyway, because it's got to be bigger than 5. So at that point, you would just not even worry about that piece. And now people are going like this. Don't worry about the bottom now. Well, no, I mean, you got you got to pay attention. But in this case, the negative 7 is not bigger than 5, so it would be excluded anyway. It was excluded in the first check. Does that make sense? The first check said it, it can't be negative 7. All right? Because here's what I have found, and, and I, I, I'm going to say this with nothing but love in my heart. Students, in a lot of ways, really just want to be mathematical robots. Like, you don't want to really think about anything. You want to see it and then reproduce it. And so what happens is, the minute I show you this answer, you go like this. All right, so when I see this, I write down this. And then when I show you this, you're going like this. 5 to negative 7. And you don't even notice how crazy that sounds. 5 to negative 7? People are like, what? can't go from 5 to negative 7. That's going the wrong damn direction. So it cannot be just a matter of, well, I'm going to do it this way, and this is how I'm going to do it, because this is the way you did it. All right? Understand what you're looking at. All right. Any questions on that? Going once. Going twice. Looking at the domains. All right. We'll stop it there.